Hi everyone. So today's video is going to be a continuation of the covalent bonding. And I would highly recommend if you haven't watched my covalent bonding videos, do so. So let's begin with the idea of the valence bond theory for the covalent bonds. Because now we'll study how actually covalent bonds are formed using orbitals. We already know the idea of S and P orbitals from the atomic structure playlist. The theory says that orbitals have electrons in them, which is something we already know from the atomic structure videos. Then the theory says electrons may be unpaired in those orbitals. If we know the Hund's rule, we would know that electrons often go unpaired in the p orbitals and depending on the configuration. Orbitals of an atom with unpaired electrons, where the electrons are not paired, like maybe px, maybe py, maybe even s orbitals with unpaired electrons, they will overlap with the orbitals of another atom. So if another atom also has unpaired electrons in its orbitals, those orbitals from one atom will overlap with the orbitals of the other atom. The fourth point says orbitals overlap to make covalent bond and now orbital overlap is the covalent bond. So when the orbitals are overlapping, they are creating a covalent bond where the unpaired electrons from both the atoms can be shared. Imagine two hydrogen atoms both having their unpaired electron in the 1s orbital. Both hydrogens have the configuration of 1s1, which means only one electron in their 1s orbital. The s orbitals are spherical, so I have drawn two spherical orbitals, and the half arrow represents the electrons. When two hydrogen atoms overlap their 1s orbital from each, the electrons pair up, and now this is what we call a single covalent bond. A hydrogen molecule is formed by the overlap of the two 1s orbitals from each. This is an SS overlap because the s orbitals from both the atoms are being overlapped. And now you have an electron pair that is also known as the bond pair. Let's continue with the idea to study how chlorine overlaps its orbitals to make a chlorine molecule. Chlorine with atomic number 17 has a configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and then in order to understand better, it's actually 3px2, 3py2, and 3pz1. There's unpaired electron in the pz orbital, and both the chlorines have similar configuration. If we diagrammatically understand these orbitals, 1s has the least energy than 2s, then the three different 2p orbitals, then 3s, and the highest energy is 3p orbitals. I have even labeled them. You can see I am putting the electron pairs by two half arrows. Now I am putting 3s electrons, then 3px has a pair, 3py has a pair, and 3pz has only one electron. It is the 3pz orbitals which have unpaired electrons in them, so the 3pz orbitals should overlap. All the other orbitals have already an electron pair in them. So imagine the two chlorine atoms with their pz orbitals only. I'm not drawing all the orbitals, I'm just drawing pz, the 3pz orbital. They are on the z-axis, that is why I'm drawing only one orbital each. They both have unpaired electron in them. They are present on the z-axis or you can say the z-axis. Now when these orbitals tend to overlap, the orbitals will combine. The y and the x-axis should have their own orbitals, but I'm not drawing them, you know, because we don't concern them right now. The three pz orbitals from both will overlap by coming closer and now you have an electron pair in the region where the orbitals are overlapped. 
This electron pair is none other than the bond pair. It is called a sigma bond where both the orbitals come and overlap each other by bumping into each other. A sigma bond is formed by the head-on overlap of two different orbitals. Let's study oxygen molecule to study how a sigma bond is formed and do we have something other than the sigma bond? Oxygen has the configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2px2, 2py1 and 2pz1. py and pz both have unpaired electrons in them. So there are two different p orbitals both having an unpaired electron. So I am drawing both. First, I am drawing these two p orbitals with pink and the other with green. Both the oxygen atoms have, so I am drawing two different sets. You can see I have the pz orbital with a pink color and I have the py orbital with a green color. pz or pz has unpaired electrons in them and py also have unpaired electrons drawn with a red color in them. The x-axis is just drawn to give you a perception of how these orbitals are here. Both the pz orbitals will bump into each other will overlap to create a sigma bond. The overlap of the two different pz orbitals is the sigma bond where the electron pair is formed and now this electron pair is known as the bond pair. The p orbitals had an option of bumping into each other, having a head-on overlap and now that is how you get the sigma bond. But both the py orbitals can't do that because now they are parallel to each other. If they want to do the head-on overlap, the sigma bond has to be broken first. The py orbitals can't do that. So what do they do is, they share the electron without bumping into each other, creating a sideways overlap. They don't mix into each other, they just share the electron in the region above and below the sigma bond. It is very strange, but this is how a pi bond is formed. The green region above and below the sigma bond is pi bond. It is widely spreaded over and below the sigma bond. The sigma bond is present straight on the internuclear axis, but the pi bond is a widely spreaded region above and below the sigma bond. The pi bond takes a very wide space. The bond pair of the sigma bond is very closer to the both nuclei. You can see there is very little distance between the electrons of sigma bond and both the nuclei of chlorine atoms. But when you look at the pi bond pair, it is really away from the nuclei of the two chlorine atoms. You can see the bigger distance, which means the electron pair of the pi bond is really away from the nuclei. Let's solidify our understanding of sigma and pi bond by studying the differences between them. Sigma bond and pi bond are the two categories of covalent bonding or you can say the orbital overlap. Sigma bond is formed by the head-on overlap of the atomic orbitals. When the orbitals have the option of completely mixing into each other, they form sigma bond like this. Pi bond is formed by side-on overlap of the atomic orbitals. It is not completely bumping into each other, but rather overlapping just sideways by not even coming closer to each other. Like this, these two pi orbitals just are making their bond above and below. It's a very strange kind of overlap without even coming closer to each other. Sigma bond is always the first bond because it is always the first priority and pi bonds are formed when the same atoms want to make second and third bond. Obviously after the first sigma bond, the second bond and the third bond is always the pi bond. So remember that first bond is sigma and second or third bond is pi. Sigma bonds are formed on the internuclear axis. You can see this dotted line as the axis where both the nuclei are present. 
sigma bond is present right on that axis. But when you talk about the pi bond, pi bond is not present on the internuclear axis. The sigma bond, on the other hand, is right there on the internuclear axis. Pi bonds are really away from the internuclear axis. They are in the region above and below the internuclear axis. So they are actually away from the nuclei of the bonding atoms. That is why sigma bonds are stronger because the electrons are right in the middle of the two nuclei, strongly attracted. Pi bonds are weak because they are away from the nuclei of the bonding atoms. And that is why you can say they are weaker bonds. I hope this is clear to you and in the next video we'll talk more about how bonding happens. Stay tuned guys. Thanks.